the Restriction of Hazardous Substances Directive 2002 EC, ROHS, short for Directive on the Restriction of the Use of Certain Hazardous Substances in Electrical and Electronic Equipment, was adopted in February 2003 by the European Union. The ROHS Directive took effect on July 1, 2006, and is required to be enforced and become law in each member state. This directive restricts the use of six hazardous materials in the manufacture of various types of electronic and electrical equipment. It is closely linked with the Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Directive 2002 EC which sets collection, recycling and recovery targets for electrical goods and is part of a legislative initiative to solve the problem of huge amounts of toxic e-waste. In speech, ROHS is often spelled out, or pronounced, or and refers to the EU standard, unless otherwise qualified. Details: Each European Union member state will adopt its own enforcement and implementation policies using the directive as a guide. ROHS is often referred to as the lead-free directive, but it restricts the use of the following six substances, lead, mercury, cadmium, hexavalent chromium, polybrominated biphenyls, polybrominated diphenyl ether. PBB and PBDE are flame retardants used in several plastics. Hexavalent chromium is used in chrome plating, chromate coatings and primers, and in chromic acid. The maximum permitted concentrations in non-exempt products are 0.1% or 1000 ppm by weight. The restrictions are on each homogeneous material in the product, which means that the limits do not apply to the weight of the finished product, or even to a component but to any single substance that could be separated mechanically a euro for example, the sheath on a cable or the tinning on a component lead. As an example, a radio is composed of a case, screws, washers, a circuit board, speakers, etc. The screws, washers, and case may each be made of homogeneous materials, but the other components comprise multiple sub-components of many different types of material. For instance, a circuit board is composed of a bare PCB, ICs, resistors, capacitors, switches, etc. A switch is composed of a case, a lever, a spring, contacts, pins, etc., each of which may be made of different materials. A contact might be composed of a copper strip with a surface coating. A speaker is composed of a permanent magnet, copper wire, paper, etc. Everything that can be identified as a homogeneous material must meet the limit. So if it turns out that the case was made of plastic with 2300 ppm PBB used as a flame retardant, then the entire radio would fail the requirements of the directive. In an effort to close the ROHS loopholes, in May 2006 the European Commission was asked to review two currently excluded product categories for future inclusion in the products that must fall into ROHS compliance. In addition the Commission entertains requests for deadline extensions or for exclusions by substance categories, substance location or weight. New legislation was published in the official journal in July, 2011 which supersedes this exemption. Note that batteries are not included within the scope of a ROHS. However, in Europe, batteries are under the European Commission's 1991 Battery Directive which was recently increased in scope and approved in the form of the new battery directive, version 2003-0282COD, which will be official when submitted to and published in the EU's official journal. While the first battery directive addressed possible trade barrier issues brought about by disparate European member states' implementation, the new directive more explicitly highlights improving and protecting the environment from the negative effects of the waste contained in batteries. It also contains a program for more ambitious recycling of industrial, automotive, and consumer batteries, gradually increasing the rate of manufacturer-provided collection sites to 45% by 2016. It also sets limits of 5 ppm mercury and 20 ppm cadmium to batteries except those used in medical, emergency, or portable power tool devices. Though not setting quantitative limits on quantities of lead, lead acid, nickel, and nickel cadmium in batteries, it cites a need to restrict these substances and provide for recycling up to 75% of batteries with these substances. 
There are also provisions for marking the batteries with symbols in regard to metal content and recycling collection information. The directive applies to equipment as defined by a section of the WEEE directive. The following numeric categories apply, large household appliances, small household appliances, IT and telecommunications equipment, consumer equipment, lighting equipment a euro including light bulbs, electronic and electrical tools, toys, leisure, and sports equipment, medical devices, monitoring and control instruments, automatic dispensers, semiconductor devices, it does not apply to fixed industrial plant and tools. Compliance is the responsibility of the company that puts the product on the market, as defined in the directive. Components and sub-assemblies are not responsible for product compliance. Of course, given the fact that the regulation is applied at the homogeneous material level, data on substance concentrations needs to be transferred through the supply chain to the final producer. An IPC standard has recently been developed and published to facilitate this data exchange, IPC 1752. It is enabled through two PDF forms that are free to use. ROHS applies to these products in the EU whether made within the EU or imported. Certain exemptions apply, and these are updated on occasion by the EU. Examples of product components containing restricted substances ROHS restricted substances have been used in a broad array of consumer electronics products. Examples of leaded components include, paints and pigments, PVC cables as a stabilizer, solders, printed circuit board finishes, leads, internal and external interconnects, glass in television and photographic products, metal parts, lamps and bulbs, batteries, cadmium is found in many of the above components. Examples include plastic pigmentation, nickel cadmium batteries and CDS photocells. Mercury is used in lighting applications and automotive switches. Examples include fluorescent lamps and mercury tilt switches. Hexavalent chromium is used for metal finishes to prevent corrosion. Polybrominated biphenyls and diphenyl ethers oxides are used primarily as flame retardants. Hazardous materials and the high-tech trash problem, ROHS and other efforts to reduce hazardous materials in electronics are motivated in part to address the global issue of consumer electronics waste. As newer technology arrives at an ever-increasing rate, consumers are discarding their obsolete products sooner than ever. This waste ends up in landfills and in countries like China to be recycled. In the fashion-conscious mobile market, 98 million U.S. cell phones took their last call in 2005. All told, the EPA estimates that in the U.S. that year, between 1.5 and 1.9 million tons of computers, TVs, VCRs, monitors, cell phones, and other equipment were discarded. If all sources of electronic waste are tallied, it could total 50 million tons a year worldwide, according to the UN Environment Programme. American electronics sent offshore to countries like Ghana in West Africa under the guise of recycling may be doing more harm than good. Not only are adult and child workers in these jobs being poisoned by heavy metals, but these metals are returning to the U.S. The U.S. right now is shipping large quantities of leaded materials to China, and China is the world's major manufacturing center, Dr. Jeffrey Weirden Hamer says, a chemistry professor at Ashland University in Ohio. It's not all that surprising things are coming full circle and now we're getting contaminated products back. Changing toxicity perceptions, in addition to the high-tech trash problem, ROHS reflects contemporary research over the past 50 years in biological toxicology that acknowledges the long-term effects of low-level chemical exposure on populations. New testing is capable of detecting much smaller concentrations of environmental toxicants. Researchers are associating these exposures with neurological, developmental, and reproductive changes. ROHS and other environmental laws are in contrast to historical and contemporary law that seek to address only acute toxicology, that is direct exposure to large amounts of toxic substances causing severe injury or death. Life Cycle Impact Assessment of Lead-Free Solder, 
The United States Environmental Protection Agency has published a life cycle assessment of the environmental impacts of lead-free and tin lead solder, as used in electronic products. For bar solders, when only lead-free solders were considered, the tin copper alternative had the lowest scores. For paste solders, bismuth silver had the lowest impact scores among the lead-free alternatives in every category except non-renewable resource consumption. For both paste and bar solders, all of the lead-free solder alternatives had a lower LCA score in toxicity categories than tin lead solder. This is primarily due to the toxicity of lead, and the amount of lead that leaches from printed wiring board assemblies, as determined by the leachability study conducted by the partnership. The study results are providing the industry with an objective analysis of the life cycle environmental impacts of leading candidate alternative lead-free solders, allowing industry to consider environmental concerns along with the traditionally evaluated parameters of cost and performance. This assessment is also allowing industry to redirect efforts toward products and processes that reduce solder's environmental footprint, including energy consumption, releases of toxic chemicals, and potential risks to human health and the environment. Another life cycle assessment by IKP, University of Stuttgart, shows similar results to those of the EPA study. Life cycle impact assessment of BFR free plastics. The ban on concentrations of brominated flame retardants above 0.1% in plastics has had an impact on plastics recycling. As more and more products include recycled plastics, it has become critical to know the BFR concentration in these plastics either by tracing the origins of the recycled plastics to establish the BFR concentrations, or by measuring the BFR concentrations from samples. Plastics with high BFR concentrations are costly to handle or to discard, whereas plastics with levels below 0.1% have value as recyclable materials. There are a number of analytical techniques for the rapid measurement of BFR concentrations. X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy can confirm the presence of bromine, but it does not indicate the BFR concentration or specific molecule. Ion attachment mass spectrometry can be used to measure BFR concentrations in plastics. The BFR ban has had significant impacts both upstream a Euro plastic material selection a Euro, and downstream a Euro plastic material recycling. ROHS2 The ROHS2 directive is an evolution of the original directive and became law on July 21, 2011 and took effect January 2, 2013. It addresses the same substances as the original directive while improving regulatory conditions and legal clarity. It requires periodic re-evaluations that facilitate gradual broadening of its requirements to cover additional electronic and electrical equipment, cables and spare parts. The CE logo now indicates compliance and ROHS2 declaration of conformity is now detailed. In 2012, a final report from the European Commission revealed that some EU member states considered all toys under the scope of the primary ROHS Directive 2002 EC, irrespective of whether their primary or secondary functions were using electric currents or electromagnetic fields. From the implementation of ROHS 2 or ROHS Recast Directive 2011 EU on, all the concerned member states will have to comply with a new regulation. Restriction exemptions there are over 80 exemptions, some of which are quite broad. Exemptions will automatically expire after five or seven years unless renewed. According to Hewlett Packard, the European Union is gradually narrowing the scope of and expiring many of the current ROHS exemptions. In addition, it is likely that new substance restrictions will be introduced in the next several years. Some exemptions, copper alloy containing up to 4% lead by weight, is permitted. Lead in high melting temperature type solders. The servers, switches, routers, cell sites, and other telecommunication equipment that constitute the global Internet and phone systems are exempt from lead content restrictions. Cadmium in solar panels, cadmium telluride thin film PV modules in photovoltaic panels are explicitly allowed by ROHS to contain unlimited cadmium, even though cadmium is restricted in all other electronics. The solar panel exemption was in the original 2003 ROHS regulation and it was further extended on May 27, 2011. 
limited amounts of mercury in fluorescent and other light bulbs where it is essential to their functioning comprise are OHS2 categories 1, 2, 3, and 4. Medical devices were exempt in the original directive, which meant they could contain unlimited amounts of toxic metals and plastics and still be marketed as OHS compliant. ROHS2 narrowed the exemption scope to active implantable medical devices only. In vitro diagnostic devices and other medical devices are now included. Automotive vehicles are exempt. Vehicles instead are addressed in the End of Life Vehicles Directive. Labeling and documentation. Today, a product sold with a valid CE mark must satisfy the ROHS2 Directive. This includes the CE required declaration of conformance document and technical documentation as created by the manufacturer. The doc details applicable directives and includes sign off by a corporate spokesperson. However, the CE mark does not necessarily indicate that a given product has minimal hazardous substances, as even products exempt under ROHS2 may display it. History ROHS did not require any specific product labeling. However many manufacturers have adopted their own compliance marks to reduce confusion. Visual indicators have included explicit or OHS compliant labels, green leaves, check marks, and PB free markings. In addition, the closely related WEEE trash can logo with an X through it is an indicator that the product may be compliant. Chinese or OHS labels, a lowercase e within a circle with arrows, can also imply compliance. ROHS2 attempts to address this issue by requiring the aforementioned CE mark whose use is policed by the Trading Standards Enforcement Agency. It states that the only permitted indication of ROHS compliance is the CE mark. Compliance, in 2012 Sweden's Chemicals Agency and Electrical Safety Authority tested 63 consumer electronics products and found that 12 were out of compliance. Chemi claims that this is similar to testing results from prior years. Eleven products contain prohibited levels of lead, and one of polybrominated diphenyl ether flame retardants. Details of seven companies have been passed to Swedish prosecutors. Chemi says that levels of non-compliance with ROHS are similar to previous years, and remain too high. Future possible additions New substance restrictions being considered for introduction in the next few years include thulic, brominated flame retardants, chlorinated flame retardants, and PVC. Other regions, Asia slash Pacific, China and Order No. 39, final measures for the administration of the control and electronic information products has the stated intent to establish similar restrictions, but in fact takes a very different approach. Unlike EU or OHS, where products in specified categories are included unless specifically excluded, there will be a list of included products, known as the Catalogue Euro C Article 18 of the Regulation Euro, which will be a subset of the total scope of electronic information products, or EIPs, to which the regulations apply. Initially, products that fall under the covered scope must provide markings and disclosure as to the presence of certain substances, while the substances themselves are not prohibited. There are some products that are EIPs, which are not in scope for EU or OHS, for example radar systems, semiconductor manufacturing equipment, photomasks, etc. The list of EIPs is available in Chinese and English. The marking and disclosure aspects of the regulation were intended to take effect on July 1, 2006, but were postponed twice to March 1, 2007. There is no timeline for the catalogue yet. Japan, Japan does not have any direct legislation dealing with the ROHS substances, but its recycling laws have spurred Japanese manufacturers to move to a lead-free process in accordance with ROHS guidelines. A ministerial ordinance Japanese industrial standard for marking of specific chemical substances, effective from July 1, 2006, directs that some electronic products exceeding a specified amount of the nominated toxic substances must carry a warning label. South Korea, South Korea promulgated the Act for Resource Recycling of Electrical and Electronic Equipment and Vehicles on April 2, 2007. This regulation has aspects of ROHS, WEE, and ELV. Turkey 
Turkey announced the implementation of their restriction of hazardous substances legislation effective June 2009. North America, California has passed the Electronic Waste Recycling Act of 2003. This law prohibits the sale of electronic devices after January 1, 2007, that are prohibited from being sold under the EU or OHS directive, but across a much narrower scope that includes LCDs, CRTs, and the like and only covers the four heavy metals restricted by our OHS. EWRA also has a restricted material disclosure requirement. Effective January 1, 2010 the California Lighting Efficiency and Toxics Reduction Act applies our OHS to general purpose lights, that is lamps, bulbs, tubes, or other electric devices that provide functional illumination for indoor residential, indoor commercial, and outdoor use. Other U.S. states and cities are debating whether to adopt similar laws, and there are several states that have mercury and PBDE bans already. Republic of Ireland Worldwide standards and certification are available under the QCO 80000 standard, governed by the National Standards Authority of Ireland, to ensure the control of hazardous substances in industrial applications. Other standards, ROHS is not the only environmental standard of which electronic product developers should be aware. Manufacturers will find that it is cheaper to have only a single bill of materials for a product that is distributed worldwide instead of customizing the product to fit each country's specific environmental laws. Therefore, they develop their own standards, which allow only the strictest of all allowable substances. For example, IBM forces each of their suppliers to complete a product content declaration form to document compliance to their environmental standard baseline environmental requirements for materials, parts and products for IBM logo hardware products. Thus. IBM banned DECABDE, even though there was formerly a ROHS exemption for this material. Similarly, here is Hewlett Packard's Environmental Standard, General Specification for the Environment. Criticism, adverse effects on product quality and reliability, plus high cost of compliance are cited as criticisms of the directive, as well as early research indicating that the life cycle benefits of lead free solder versus traditional solder materials are mixed. Criticism early on came from an industry resistant to change and a misunderstanding of solders and soldering processes. Deliberate misinformation was espoused to resist what was perceived as a non tariff barrier created by European bureaucrats. Many believe the industry is stronger now through this experience and has a better understanding of the science and technologies involved. One criticism of our OHS is that the restriction of lead and cadmium does not address some of their most prolific applications, while being costly for the electronics industry to comply with. Specifically, the total lead used in electronics makes up only 2% of world lead consumption, while 90% of lead is used for batteries. Another criticism is that less than 4% of lead in landfills is due to electronic components or circuit boards while approximately 36% is due to leaded glass in monitors and televisions, which can contain up to 2 kg per screen. The more common lead-free solder systems have a higher melting point, for example a 30 AA degree Celsius typical difference for tin silver copper alloys, but wave soldering temperatures are approximately the same at 255 AA degree Celsius. However at this temperature most typical lead-free solders have longer wetting times than eutectic PBS and 3763 solder. Additionally wetting force is typically lower, which can be disadvantageous, but advantageous in other situations. Care must be taken in selection of ROHS solders as some formulations are harder with less ductility, increasing the likelihood of cracks instead of plastic deformation, which is typical for lead-containing solders. Cracks can occur due to thermal or mechanical forces acting on components or the circuit board, the former being more common during manufacturing and the latter in the field. ROHS solders exhibit advantages and disadvantages in these respects, dependent on packaging and formulation. The editor of Conformity magazine wonders if the transition to lead-free solder will affect long-term reliability of electronic devices and systems especially in applications more mission-critical than in consumer products, citing possible breaches due to other environmental factors like oxidation. 
This article refers to the Newark and 1ROHS legislation and technical manual, which cites these and other lead free solder issues, such as warping or delamination of printed circuit boards, damage to through holes, ICs and components on circuit boards, and added moisture sensitivity, all of which may compromise quality and reliability. Effect on reliability Potential reliability concerns are addressed in Annex Item No. 7 of the ROHS Directive, granting servers exemption from regulation until 2010. These issues were raised when the directive was first implemented in 2003 and reliability effects were less known. Another potential problem that lead-free solders face is the growth of tin whiskers. These thin strands of tin can grow and make contact with an adjacent trace, developing a short circuit. Historically tin whiskers have been associated with a handful of failures, including a nuclear power plant and pacemaker incident where pure tin plating was used. However, these failures predate ROHS. They also do not involve consumer electronics, and therefore may employ ROHS-restricted substances if desired. To help mitigate potential problems, lead-free manufacturers are using a variety of approaches such as tin-zinc formulations that produce non-conducting whiskers or formulations that reduce growth, although they do not halt growth completely in all circumstances. Fortunately, experience thus far suggests deployed instances of ROHS-compliant products are not failing due to whisker growth. Dr. Ronald Lasky of Dartmouth College reports, ROHS has been in force for more than 15 months now, and $400 billion ROHS compliant products have been produced. With all of these products in the field, no significant numbers of twin whisker related failures have been reported. Whisker growth occurs slowly over time, is unpredictable, and not fully understood, so time may be the only true test of these efforts. Whisker growth is even observable for lead-based solders, albeit on a much smaller scale. Some countries have exempted medical and telecommunication infrastructure products from the legislation. However, this may be a moot point, since as electronic component manufacturers convert their production lines to producing only lead-free parts, conventional parts with eutectic tin lead solder will simply not be available, even for military, aerospace and industrial users. To the extent that only soldier is involved, this is at least partially mitigated by many lead-free components compatibility with lead-containing solder processes. Lead-frame-based components, such as QFPs, SOICs, and SOPs with gullwing leads, are generally compatible since the finish on the part leads contributes a small amount of material to the finished joint. However, Components such as BGAs which come with lead-free solder balls and leadless parts are often not compatible with lead-containing processes. Economic effect, there are no de minimis exemptions, for example, for micro-businesses. This economic effect was anticipated and at least some attempts at mitigating the effect were made. Another form of economic effect is the cost of product failures during the switch to a OHS compliance. For example, Tin whiskers were responsible for a 5% failure rate in certain components of Swiss Swatch watches in 2006, prior to the July implementation of a ROHS, reportedly triggering a $1 billion recall. Swatch responded to this by applying for an exemption to a ROHS compliance. This was denied in July 2006 and today their parts are compliant. Benefits, Health Benefits ROHS helps reduce damage to people and the environment in third world countries where much of today's high tech trash ends up. The use of lead free solders and components has provided immediate health benefits to electronics industry workers in prototype and manufacturing operations. Contact with solder paste no longer represents the same health hazard as it used to. Reliability concerns unfounded. Contrary to the predictions of widespread component failure and reduced reliability, ROHS's first anniversary passed with little fanfare. Today, millions of compliant products are in use worldwide. Most modern consumer electronics are now ROHS compliant. Many electronics companies keep ROHS status pages on their corporate websites. For example, the AMD website states,
Although lead-containing solder cannot be completely eliminated from all applications today, AMD engineers have developed effective technical solutions to reduce lead content in microprocessors and chipsets to ensure ROHS compliance while minimizing costs and maintaining product features. There is no change to fit, functional, electrical or performance specifications. Quality and reliability standards for ROHS compliant products are expected to be identical compared to current packages. ROHS printed circuit board finishing technologies are surpassing traditional formulations in fabrication thermal shock, solder paste printability, contact resistance, and aluminum wire bonding performance and nearing their performance in other attributes. The properties of lead-free solder, such as its high temperature resilience, has been used to prevent failures under harsh field conditions. These conditions include operating temperatures with test cycles in the range of a 40 AA degree Celsius to plus 150 AA degree Celsius with severe vibration and shock requirements. Automobile manufacturers are turning to ROHS solutions now as electronics move into the engine bay. Flow properties and assembly One of the major differences between lead-containing and lead-free solder pastes is the flow of the solder in its liquid state. Lead-containing solder has a lower surface tension, and tends to move slightly to attach itself to exposed metal surfaces that touch any part of the liquid solder. Lead-free solder conversely tends to stay in place where it is in its liquid state, and attaches itself to exposed metal surfaces only where the liquid solder touches it. This lack of flow a euro while typically seen as a disadvantage because it can lead to lower quality electrical connections a euro can be used to place components more tightly than they used to be placed due to the properties of lead containing solders. For example, Motorola reports that their newer OHS wireless device assembly techniques are enabling a smaller, thinner, lighter unit. Their Motorola Q phone would not have been possible without the new solder. The lead-free solder allows for tighter pad spacing. Some exempt products achieve compliance. Research into new alloys and technologies is allowing companies to release ROHS products that are currently exempt from compliance, for example computer servers. IBM has announced a ROHS solution for high lead solder joints once thought to remain a permanent exemption. The lead-free packaging technology offers economical advantages in relation to traditional bumping processes, such as solder waste reduction, use of bulk alloys, quicker time to market for products and a much lower chemical usage rate. Test and measurement vendors, such as National Instruments, have also started to produce ROHS compliant products, despite devices in this category being exempt from the ROHS directive. See also, Battery Directive Electronic waste, green computing, ion attachment mass spectrometry, used to enforce ROHS limits on banned substances, lead safe work practices in the U.S., list of European Union directives, waste electrical and electronic equipment directive, references. Further reading, Wang, Jenny S. Introduction to Implementing Lead-Free Electronics. McGraw-Hill Professional. ISBN A0-07-144374-1. External links. Power supplies comply with ROHS Directive 2011 EU. ROHS Compliance Guidance for Businesses on Netregs.gov.uk. ROHS Compliance in the EU. www.rose.eu. Official United Kingdom site on ROHS. EU ROHS Enforcement Guidance Document, V1. EU ROHS Enforcement Authorities Informal Network. May 2006, Properties of Lead Free Solders National Institute of Standards and Technology, Support of Industry Compliance with the EU Directive on Restriction of Certain Hazardous Substances on NIST.gov, Essential Links for CE Marking in the UK, Case Study on ROHS 2 Compliance.